The king, warrior, magician, and lover are the four guiding archetypes which influence the masculine psyche. But how can we use these mythical principles, this imaginal realm, this archetypal pool of potential, to actually live lives as better, healthier, and more robustly complex men in a very confusing and oftentimes difficult to navigate modern world. Well, that's what we're going to explore in this episode of Inner Work Essentials. Obviously, this episode is focused around the book King, Warrior, Magician and Lover by Robert Moore and Douglas Gillette. This book, by all measures of success, is perhaps the central book in the mythopoetic men's movement of the 1980s and 1990s. It came out in 1991. So it celebrated its 30-year anniversary last year. And there's lots of wonderful information out there. I am not the first, or even the thousandth, or even probably the ten thousandth guy to stand in front of a camera and talk about these four archetypes. So, what am I going to do with this video? Well, I could go to page 16 in this book, which is perhaps one of the most important pages, because... It shows you a wonderful archetypal map of the four functions of the male psyche in addition to their shadow expressions. For example, the king in his fullness is fantastic. He has these qualities of regality and power which serves both self and other, the ability to pass on blessings and the ability to be on the throne as the kingly figure which organizes the masculine psyche because the king is the central figure of which the warrior magician, and lover, all centralize around. It's almost as if there's a tapestry of four quadrants, but you have to imagine that at times the four quadrants that are made up of king, warrior, magician, and lover actually become more like a triple structure, where there's a king as a central circular force, and then if you want to turn two dimensions into three dimensions, you have to imagine that that obviously becomes pyramid-like, depending on the geometry that you want to go with, um, it's a useful metaphor to explore. So, that's where I could go into. I could go into a very literal, king is this, warrior is this, magician is this, lover is this, and these are the shadow expressions which we can work on, and it's a really interesting video to make. However, I don't think it's the area which I could really offer the most value for you, because I've been working with these archetypes in client work, in real time over the course of months and years with both men and women. And I think the real secret to the masculine path towards wholeness is finding a way to integrate these energies through daily action, not only as a, a conceptual mythic framework, but almost as a set of colours, which we paint onto the canvas of our masculinity. Sometimes we'll pick up the warrior colour and there'll be a lot of painting in a certain season of our life and then there'll be a time where it's more magician-like. But to get even more accurate, we need to understand that masculinity, in addition to expressing itself across a full spectrum of morality, emotionality, and, to some degree, consciousness, also has varied expression within a given day. The king, warrior, magician, and lover are archetypal entities to be lived. They are a path to be unfolded over time as we develop as both men and women who are accessing our inner masculine. So, for this video, I'm going to try and illustrate the easiest way in, but also the work to be navigated ahead when it comes to working in the mythic imagination from the foundational understanding of the fourfold masculine mind and these central archetypal figures. So, where should we begin? Well, again, there's this idea of the tapestry of masculinity. There's this idea that each of these archetypal entities are almost like colors or materials which we use to build up our personality and build up our sense of identity. Of course, as men, we are not just these four archetypal figures, and in fact, it would be a great spiritual inflation to think that because you're accessing kingly energy that you are now wearing the kingly crown and you can prance around in your daily life 
and be a big king. It's not how it works. The reality is that we are custodians of these energies and we find ways to express them in very pragmatic but very unimpressive ways most of the time. The warrior energy, for example, is typically seen as the energy of doing. It's the energy of going out and going to work. It's the energy of fighting for something, but it's also at a higher level of expression, the energy of commitment and the energy of dedication. And to some degree, it may be structure. Some would say that the king is about structure, but we can't be lopsided into one energy and identify as a warrior. Neither can we be lopsided towards a lover and be a poet or a, an artist or a sensualist or a romantic. It's a fourfold structure. And in the same way, if you imagine a tapestry, a beautiful piece of fabric that has many colors and artworks inside of it, if you were to look at it in its completion and see the four colors of these four archetypes for all their beauty, you would be amazed. But then if you were to switch one color off and suddenly it turns grayscale, the whole image would lose a sense of vibrancy. Let alone if you were to take a penknife and cut out that entire section that had the colouring of the magician energy, for example. It's not only about accessing each entity or each archetypal pattern and energetic structure for its own sake, it's about seeing how they complement each other. It's about seeing that the masculine psyche is an expression of nuanced complexity, not only within these four archetypal figures, because there's so much more that we could talk about. We could talk about all of the inner feminine archetypes, more uh, gender neutral ones like the thief or the saboteur, and also there's more otherworldly entities and archetypes that we can look towards. The tapestry is really defined by the depth, not just the superficiality. So, this is the next stage that I want to go into. When it comes to living, the masculine path towards wholeness. We have to understand that depth reveals itself within each quadrant. I showed you earlier a diagram from the book about these triangle structures where you have a shadow expression of each archetype. And the shadow has a positive shadow and a negative shadow. For example, within the warrior, you have a masochistic element, which is where you're exerting too much force outwards, and a sadistic element, which is where you're receiving the punishment or the damage or the aggression. In very simple terms. It gets far more nuanced and beautiful than this. But to understand that there's a shadow expression within each of the four archetypes is wonderful. The next step is to realize each of these four central archetypes exist along a spectrum, horizontally, but also vertically, depending on how frequently, how deeply, and how expressively we access each energetic pattern over the course of our lifetime. I'm sure you've seen some men who are very warrior-esque, some who are very magician-like and cerebral, and they almost have a, a lopsided tilting towards a certain element of their expression, which leaves them perhaps very brilliantly expressed in one area, but ultimately a little bit, a little bit lopsided, right? It's not even that they need a full 25, 25, 25, 25 split. Some would even say that that's not possible because the king is the central archetype. So the king is what we're aiming towards as men or women who are accessing our inner masculinity. And the king is that central figure who takes those three other energetic forces and brings them into the fullness, which gives back to the community. But the depth of each archetypal figure has to be revealed through consistent engagement over time. How do we do this? In terms of imaginal inner work, it's through accessing the myths and the stories which feed us. It's through seeing heroic figures, for example, like Maximus from Gladiator or Aragorn from Lord of the Rings as really healthy expressions of all four quadrants of masculinity to a more or less messy, but still very healthy, full masculine expression. For example, Aragorn in Lord of the Rings, although in the films this part isn't really played up. In the books, the original Tolkien books, he has far more healing ability. He's skilled with herbs and he's also a bit magical. He's elf-like to some degree. He has that 
otherworldly lovery element as well as the very regal warrior who can slay orcs and the same with the figure of maximus uh, from gladiator he has his competency he has his ability as a general and his ability to lead men which inspires respect from those around him but he also has that agrarian farmer-like earthy sensual lover part of his nature I'm saying these examples to hopefully illustrate um, in popular culture what it would mean to walk that path towards wholeness. The walking of the path is the journey and the wholeness is never a truly complete state and wholeness will look like a different degree of completion to each individual man. For myself, for example, I notice that I have a tilt currently at this stage in my life towards not kingly energy because I wouldn't say that I'm in kingly energy but young princedom like a prince archetypally speaking who's trying to learn the ways of the realm to use mythical language I'm trying to learn what it would mean to occupy this space and give blessings and give offering in a way where I can build up that which is around me I'm nowhere near a level of kingship, and actually Robert Moore, not in this book, but in a different book that I've got on the bookshelf, I think it's in The Archetype of Initiation by Robert Moore. He says that the man can only truly be accessing his king energy about age 55. So what are we to do as young men? Well, we shouldn't get confused with going towards the crown as the path towards wholeness as being young men who already have the crown on our heads, because that's how you get to things like gang culture or things like consumerist artificial propping up of our identities by having a lot of flash and a lot of bravado and thinking that that's what it means to be a king of course it's a simplistic over reduction but uh, the core idea that again i want to try and really present to you is that the masculine path towards wholeness is influenced by these four central archetypal figures and far more which comes later on but that sense of individual painting that sense of tapestry building how we're going to express our masculinity will have a different degree of intensity a different proportion of variety and ultimately a significantly different image as an end result depending on the individual man or woman who's accessing her inner masculinity based on our lifestyle, based on our ambitions, based on our desires, and we can't read too closely to an archetypal story and think that we could truly embody everything which is unconscious. That would be a real magician inflation. It's just not possible. One final point that I want to bring up is about healing the shadow elements of the four archetypes in everyday, real-world examples. Unfortunately, it's probably not what you want to hear because people who get into the concept of king warrior magician and lover are usually quite they're quite drawn towards the higher self-actualizing individuate individuating ideas and not necessarily the trauma work that's demanded of growing into our fullness as men trauma therapy and jungian therapy and somatic therapy and parts work and inner work would all suggest that the path towards wholeness begins with a looking back towards where we've been. And in terms of the shadow elements of the masculine psyche, this actually means looking at our degree of immaturity, our degree of yet to be developed capacity to really take on the energies that would come with a mythic inspiration. In practical effect, I have not seen a single exception in the client work that I've done with both men and women where this hasn't meant going back to childhood and the way that we engage with the four archetypes during those key developmental years, usually during our late childhood and adolescence, about the age of nine, ten, is when the mythic imagination starts to really switch on for kids. Sure, we might look superheroes or warriors a little bit earlier than that, but that degree of identifying with a mythic figure really starts to take on a whole new form and some of the shadowy elements some of the trauma-based elements where we were either shamed for being a certain way or another maybe too aggressive in a sensitive family maybe too soft in an aggressive family that's where the core wounding is which keeps us locked at a lower degree of masculine 
full spectrum embodiment. It's almost as if we we're trying to paint on the canvas of our masculine expression and the trauma is like a thick sludge which is preventing us from putting our paintbrush in. We're getting just the little tip of that red that it means to be a warrior and we're thinking that we can paint a full canvas, we're thinking that we can have a full complete masculinity without unblocking the sludge which is keeping us from getting to the depth of that emotional expression. So, what are we to do about this? Well, I've already said it's about inner child work, essentially. It's about understanding that the immature warrior, lover, magician, and king, which is a princely energy at its core, are all bound up in certain trauma patterns and certain damaging and scar tissue that we may not want to look back and retrieve, but if we really want to walk further along this path and be more fully rounded out men who are here to live our purpose, and hopefully, if you've truly accessed all archetypes correctly, give back to others, then we need to first learn how to give back to ourselves. We need to learn reparenting, we need to learn how to give love to our boyhood, and not try to shun it away or shame it and mature too quickly, and the only way to do that is through inner child work. So, click on over to the next episode of Inner Work Essentials, where conveniently enough, we're going to be doing some inner child work in a way where you'll really benefit. I'll see you over there.